Hey guys, it's American Choir Boy here. Today I'm going to give you a video of me making a furler, or iron in it rather. And uh, it's kind of an update to my previous videos. This is kind of the finalized version. I've been doing these this way for a long time now. So we're going to get you the most effective way to purler an iron a purler. Um, but well, first off, I got down here, my beads are laid out. I've already laid them out ahead of time. And it's a Pokeball. So once you've got that down, also a little trick just to show you. If your beads are kind of like laying in here a little crooked because your board is a little bit warped, take your tweezers, just kind of drag it along the pins and it'll shake the beads. And it should help them get straightened up. Just a side note I thought I'd share. But once your beads are laid, we're going to tape the purler. So let me find my tape. Now what I have here is masking tape, and it's painter's grade. It's by Do It Best. It's the painter's grade. It's a, it's a touch thicker, and uh, it's fairly sticky, so it works pretty well. So to tape this... Get a strip about like this that'll cover over the section you're putting the tape over uh, and leave about an inch off each side, maybe a little more. Also leave about a half inch or so above, or any amount really, but right about a half inch maybe above because you want to have a little bit of excess hanging over. So grip it fairly tight, but don't pull on it very much. Just pull it slightly taut and then come straight down. And then touch it onto the board. And then lightly tap over where the beads are at. Then for your next one, overlap the um, the one row of beads that are is currently under the uh, last strip of tape. We're gonna overlap that by at least one bead length. You can probably see the doubleness there. Doubleness. That's a word. That's a word now. So one more. And just like the top, we're going to make sure there's a little bit hanging off the bottom. So once you've done that, now's a good time to flatten it and press into it. Because we're going to lift this up off the board. So go ahead and take the time to kind of press in. And really work at it. The harder you do this, the longer you do this, the less chance you'll have for a bead falling off because it doesn't stick to it horribly well, and that's what we're looking for. We want this to peel off relatively easily after it's done cooling. Okay. So then we can grab it from the side here. And I'm grabbing the top part first that I laid down because the next piece is over top of it. So. When I pull it up, if you pull it from this way, you run the risk of having this part here come off. So to avoid that, we go up from here. And peeled off like diagonally, maybe, that works well. So take it right off the board. I'm going to get the board out of the way. So there it is. One important thing to keep in mind, too, with the tape method, um, depending on what the sprite is, if it's, you know, orientation sensitive, you want to make sure you put the beads down reverse of how you want it to face when you are finished with it. So if you noticed this image or this sprite has flipped now, obviously. But if you don't remember to start that way, you go to flip it and you go, oh, well, too late now. So anyway. Next, what we're going to do is we're going to poke holes in the tape in each bead. There's two ways you can do this. I recommend this first one. If you get good at it, it doesn't take too long. But you basically take your tweezers, which are pointy tip, by the way. Not slanted tip like these. I don't even know what these are doing up here. Get rid of that mess. These pointed tip for bead placing and for poking. And you can put them together and, and put in a hole like this. Or if you're real tricky, separate them just a little bit 
and you can do two at a time. As long as there's a hole in there, you're in good shape. Now the other method is one that I just discovered recently. Shout out to Starwin. You can actually take the board and punch holes right in it. And what I do is just do it a little bit at a time here. You gotta push relatively hard. You gotta kind of press on the outer edge of that board. It's really hard to try to come in all at once and push down like that. So you go a little bit at a time and you see where I put the, the pegs, they're sinking in now to the other holes and it's giving me like an angle to do this from. So you kind of press in on the top of the board real hard. This is really tricky on bigger purlers, so you may just want to stick to the tweezers. And I'll actually finish this up on this part. Give it a good press. So it's important to have a good surface to work on right here, because I actually taped the purler down to the table so it would stay in place. Otherwise, you have a bad time when you go to pull this board off. So now that I've done that, pick it up in the same manner as you took it off the board. Now, the reason I did that is to allow heat or airflow to go through the beads instead of get trapped. I have an image that I used to make this sprite and lay the beads down, and I'll post that down in the description alongside this finished purler so you can see the results. Because the one reason I'm making this is to show you a high quality purler versus a not so quality purler. So the one I, I uh, went off of is not so high quality. The one I'm going to iron will be. So I will post that in the description. Take a look at that when I'm done, and you will see the difference between poking holes and not poking holes. But this is important. I'm going to grab my pillowcase. I'm going to use this. See, it's cloth. It'll allow some airflow to go through it. What I'm going to do. I'm going to put it right over top this lovely velvet pillowcase. So now it's elevated just a little bit. So now we have airflow. So what that does is it lets it go through the heat and it won't trap. You'll notice in the image I'm going to post is there is holes that are kind of open. You look close at a few of the beads. They're kind of puffed a bit. Those are suffering from heat expansion where the heat traps and that's what you're left with. There's no way to actually make them melt properly. So that'll be the result. And that's not what we're going for today. We're going for a smooth, very even uh, surface with no holes. Finally, let me get my parchment paper. So this is Reynolds brand. Non-stick, oven safe, parchment paper. So place it right over. Make sure it's nice and flat. And if you like, stick it to the tape a little bit. It'll help keep it in place. So, one more thing. Um, don't leave any tape exposed. Make sure the paper covers all your tape. Because if your iron touches this tape, it's going to get on the iron, and you'll notice it'll become very hard to move the iron over the surface of your purler. Makes it really hard to do that. So, got my iron ready. It's preheated. I have it on the highest setting. So, use high heat. I'm going to use a fair amount of pressure. For this smaller one, I don't need too much. But if you're making a bigger purler, you're going to want lots of pressure. This one, not so much. I'm not going to put too much. Now, I stand up to iron them. Makes it easier. So, what you'll do is you'll place for this one, the whole thing will fit underneath the iron. So, for a smaller puller like this, you can put the iron right over top. And you don't have to worry about uh, making sure the heat and pressure is even. So, um, I'm just going to go ahead and put the iron right over it. And what I'm going to do is circles. If you're doing anything but circles, you're wasting your time. So, decent amount of pressure, high heat, we're going to do circles. And we're going to do slow circles. There's one thing that works pretty well, is to go kind of slow and let the heat 
saturate that bead. Don't try to go over like the whole entire thing. Like if you're doing a bigger perler, go ahead and focus on one spot before moving to the other. So kind of slow, firm, fairly firm pressure, like just enough to start crushing an orange or something. And my iron started to lose heat. Just so you'd start crushing an orange so that its peel would maybe start splitting. Something like that. So I'm going to, like I said, I'll leave it over it a little bit like this. I'll move the iron around to get different parts of the iron because no matter what, the iron's going to lose a little bit of heat. So you want to keep that heat more constant. All right, I'm watching it as I pass over it, and I'm seeing that the holes are sealed up. And I don't want to go too much farther than that because we have a chance of melting the beads down too far. Now I'm going to put weight on that. I got a nice flat piece of wood and a 25 pound weight because why not? So, like I said, I will let that cool completely before taking this off. And this one will might take 20, 25 minutes. Let it cool completely till it's cold. Otherwise, any leftover heat will, will kind of uh, contract or warp it a little bit. So keep it flat, make it cold. So one more little thing here. Just to give you an idea how this works, I will full screen my webcam. So here's a perler that I've made before. As you can see, and you'll see in the other picture that I post, this one is very smooth. The only thing you see in the middle of that bead is a tiny little pock, just a little bit of an indication that there was once a hole there, trying to get the out of the light. And this is the side that I didn't iron, is if you'll notice, all the, looks like beads. Some amateur artists out there, I'm sure even a few of you who have done perler beads, you'll notice that if you've ironed it a little too much, it won't look like this on the other side. But if you do it about exactly like I just did it and you practice at it, you'll eventually be able to get a nice smooth surface on this side, and a perfectly beaded side on the other side. Also, if you'll notice, this one's pretty flat. I'm not, you know, I'm not bending it to make it look flat. It's just flat. You know, very little deflection. I put it down on the table, it doesn't move too much when you tap it. So, really nice. Same with this one. All mine look like this. I'm no joke. They look really nice. They look nice and flat. But also, the other thing I want to show you, if you look at the side profile, maybe kind of hard to tell, but I've only ironed through maybe 20% of the bead. Starting from the top going down, only about 20% maybe. If you do too much and get down below 50%, that's when you start losing this. You can go down a little further than I do and you'll still kind of look like this, but you'll see like little in the middle. It'll puff out a little bit, but it'll look okay. Optimally, you want 20% from the top down and you'll get a perfectly beaded side. They're a little deeper. The holes are a little deeper on this side, so this one looks even better, I would say. So that's why you don't want to iron it for too long. And that's why I use high heat. Use medium heat and you're noticing that the beads aren't sealing up right away. Um, the longer you do that, eventually it will mash the beads down. They will simply heat all the way through. You do this, you're not heating those beads all the way through. The bottom is never going to get hot enough to really melt. So that's what you're looking for. That's why I do it the way I do. Um, so once again, I'll post a picture, the, the, the one I used and the one I just ironed, and you can see the difference, what this technique actually does. If you have any questions, follow me at twitch.tv slash American Choir Boy. When I'm streaming pearls, you can ask me any question. I'll gladly answer it. I label them to pearl tutorials. So ask away. I'm here to help people make pearlers, and uh, I hope you will uh, use this technique to great effect. So. We'll see you later. Have a good one.